City. Hello everyone, here we are on the set of Home I'm Darling with our director, Tori Truss. Hey Tori, good morning. Hi Beth. <laughs> so Tori, I just wanted to get you on camera speaking a little bit about the play mm -hmm. and telling our audiences why you think it's something they might enjoy seeing. Oh, well, there's a number of re reasons to see the play. Um, well, first of all, it's a really good play. It's really well written. It's provocative, meaning it gets you to think about lots of different things, uh, political things, social things, work things, relationship things. Um, and you get to think about the 1950s, which is always fun. <laughs> And it's also, we have beautiful production values. It's wonderful to look at. And I just want to say personally that theater here is so intimate and gorgeous that it feels really special to be in this theater. Oh, great. Yeah. I'll do a little pan here so that our audience can see a little bit more of the set. Here we have Diane Larson has created this set and it's part kitchen and part living room and part bedroom upstairs. So this, say a little about how we use the set maybe. Well, the, um, the idea is that this is a, a house, a semi-detached house in a, a neighborhood in England. And it's a house that was built in the 1920s and it's been restored to the 1950s. So we have this, I don't know if you can see the floor, but this beautiful um, tile floor that you would see in kitchens all over the place in the 1950s. And that's kind of our theme of like, here is the beauty of the 1950s. And, and the colors are all from the 1950s. And basically the actors kind of flow from one room to the next and certain things uh, my husband observed that he felt that the living room area was very masculine and that the kitchen area was very feminine and in some ways the play does bring up gender roles and how who, who is the provider and how do we provide for each other and um, it questions that and it asks us to think deeply about it maybe beyond the 1950s, but using the 1950s as kind of the baseline of what is it to provide in a marriage or in a partnership. So the characters in the play, they don't actually live in the 1950s, is that right? They don't. <laughs> they, they've decided that they wanted to live in the 1950s, as though it's the 1950s because they feel that that time was a time of, uh, of values that they value. And, and the play kind of questions that a little bit. Um, but in the meantime, you get to see these great costumes from the <laughs> 1950s, beautiful dresses, and you get to see some of the paraphernalia of the 50s, as well as people wrestling with the ideas that are presented in the 50s and how how do you how do you create a balanced relationship mm. in the in this day and age so do you think this is anything that might ring true in today's world at all oh yeah absolutely because well i don't want to give away too much but i, I maybe i'm not if i am beth will cut it out <laughs> so what has happened is that you have two people, a couple, who have met because they like the 1950s. They are both very, uh, they both work in jobs. The jobs are, are, are very successful for them, but they have to work really, really hard and long hours. And, you know, office work, working 12 hours a day can be a grind. And sometimes people, can have the choice to do other things, but sometimes they can't. And in this play, 
that's wrestled with a little bit. Hmm. Hmm. So um, some people say that this play reminds them a little of another play that was <gasps> done in the last century. Could you speak a little about that? Oh, yeah. So what drew me to this play was the fact that it's a reflection of Ibsen's A Doll's House. And, you know, the Doll's, doll's House in, was written in the late 1880s, right? Yeah. And it was so provocative that Ibsen had to rewrite the ending. And what happens is you have a marriage where the husband is the provider, it's a patriarchal system, and the woman is the wife and mother, is trying to keep the house together. And in doing so, she's made some decisions that were not good decisions, but she keeps it from her husband. And what happens in that play is that when the husband and the wife